Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Yiga, which translates to The Fly, is a another movie that's written and directed by S.S. Raja Muli, uh, the guy that brought us RRR, Baha Billy, and uh, so many other great Indian films. Uh, this is a film that's been recommended to me multiple times in my YouTube comments and online. Uh, one that I was looking forward to. I had to, I ended up purchasing it blind buy uh, on YouTube. It was the only place available. Uh, sadly, the movies previous to this, which I still want to go back into, at least one or two other titles. Uh, really not available anywhere, um, especially in with like English subtitles. So uh, it's going to be tough to track that down. I would like to watch more of his movies. Uh, but this one came out in 2012. Uh, the runtime, about two and a half hours, as most of his movies are over the two-hour mark, which I'm usually not a big fan of. However... I've noticed in all of the Indian films that I've watched thus far, which has only been like five so far, they all have long run times. However, they all justify them completely. Uh, there is so much packed into these movies uh, that it is uh, makes for a great viewing experience. And this one is no different. This one very different than all of them. This one... Uh, kind of a mix of a rom-com, the beginning of this film, the first 30 minutes, is very much a rom-com, a, a love triangle, as you were, between a successful man who can have any woman he wants and a young kid who seems to be uh, in love with this girl who's not paying him the, the time of day, this unrequited love. And uh, this girl who is an artist, she's a micro artist, which is very unique. I used to, you know, f when I first started on TikTok, one of the first accounts that I followed was a micro artist who would carve things out of uh, the tips of pencils. Uh, and this movie starts with her carving, doing a carving into a piece of rice. Uh, so very unique type of art. And uh, uh, an art practice that really plays into the plot of this movie, the story of this movie. This movie is also kind of an animated adventure. Uh, there's definitely a lot of computer CGI in this, which, you know, because of, uh, I'm sure the budget wasn't that high. Uh, it also came out in 2012. It's clearly CG, but... The aesthetic, the tone of this film, it really fits because it, it it's very much a playful, even though there's dark moments to this movie, it still very has a very playful, comedic, almost kids movie, family movie type of a tone in a lot of aspects of it. Some of the score, the action movies, the action moments uh, with this fly that is a major part of this movie uh, where we're following this fly we're getting to see things from the perspective of the fly uh clearly cg so it has like almost a a touch of a bug's life in this in the same vein uh but a great movie a fun ride let me tell you uh it's a fun ride and i am going to spoil aspects of this movie in order to talk about this movie i would highly recommend checking it out if you're into like it starts off as a story that this this guy is telling his kid his kid wants a story wants a new story the kid's tired of all these other stories uh so in an effort to to tell the story he tells a story about a fly which the way the kid is acting is almost like the kid is is in a lot of way the inspiration for the the reason why the fly is there like a nagging buzzing kind of annoyance uh, but this dad turns it into this epic tale, really. Uh, and the tale is, you know, it starts off with this rom-com. Really, I didn't really like the first 30 minutes. I have to be honest. have to be honest. Now, going into this movie, I was told 
that the first 30 minutes are like a rom-com and then it gets into this other thing. 100% agree that it is the first 30 minutes and then it gets into this other thing. And once it gets into this other thing, it really gets going. But the rom-com aspect of it was kind of painful in some ways. I really didn't like any of the characters. I didn't like uh, the, the, the dude, the, the predatory type of guy, uh, Sudeep, who is like, he kind of looks like uh, an, an earlier version of Sylvester Stallone in a way, like an Indian Sylvester Stallone. Uh, but he's a guy like there's a scene where he's at a shooting range and the, a woman comes up and he just like shows her how to shoot a gun. Like it's very like very like toxic masculinity. I can have any woman, a guy that would spout from the, the highest of hills, how he is the alpha man, like the one of the most annoying and disgusting versions of toxic masculinity uh soupty kind of represents then you have this girl uh kali kala who is the love interest right she works for a nonprofit, and she but she's like this neighbor kid who's nami who's nani who's into her like she clearly into her does everything to try and you know helps her out like the power goes out and he rigs up a flashlight onto a uh, satellite dish in a way to like give her a spotlight so she can keep working at night like he does everything because he loves her and does all, makes all these excuses why she's ignoring him and she's clearly igno like playing hard to get kind of a thing it's like i don't know that whole all, the entire dynamic of everything i didn't like <laughs> and like her like why are you ignoring this guy either like be honest with him if you don't like him don't string him along like clearly he likes you or like just like see where it goes but like this that whole stringing him along playing hard to get kind of a thing is just it's it's tired and it's kind of disgusting and i don't like games and but it's rom-com games and i don't know uh and then soupty is like a predator like he is She's her prey, and she clearly isn't into him in that way. She's clearly more into Nani, but it, the first 30 minutes was kind of a struggle. Let's take a little break from the Ray Taylor Show to promote my live art streams. That's right, I am an artist as well as a podcaster, and I paint live every Thursday at 4.20 Pacific Time. Head on over, the best place ever for streaming, youtube.com slash inspired disorder. That's right, every Thursday at 4.20, you can watch me paint the many faces. Every week, I paint seven new faces of abstract portraits, ink on paper, and you can watch that happen. You can hang out with me while I listen to a classic episode from one of my favorite podcasts. Head on over to youtube.com slash inspired disorder and check it out. Say hi. Let's hang out. Let's have some fun. And let's paint some faces. Now let's get back to the show. But it still sets them up. It sets up Nani's complete and utter devotion to Kala it, it sets up the type of person Kala is and how, like, even when she finds out that he's in love, like, there is a moment when this movie takes a turn, right? There is a moment where Nani, is, again, spoiling, obviously, I'm going to be talking about stuff, certain plot things. And when this movie takes a turn, it is, like, after Kala and Nani, like, actually kind of become honest like she opens up and a actually lets him in to her heart in some way right it's that moment where the especially when you're younger that moment where there's so much like butterflies and tension and the moment where you realize that like oh i like her and she likes me and it's like the sky opens up and musical happens and it's it's beautiful and and, and birds are singing and you, you like you're you're walking on air and all of those things and how in that moment it is a very unique thing right it's before there's all of this potential involved in like the emotions what can happen with this new love 
this relationship, all of those things. It's like this, this like there's so much condensed like emotions and and uh, and emotions and and like so much potential, so much energy that's built into this one micro moment. And then to have all of that potential and all of that what could be and all of that what might have been get taken away before you get that opportunity to find out is brutal. And it's that moment where Sudeep kills Nani. And it's like, oh, no. Like, it's, it's so brutal because they have this moment where it's like, finally... Finally, they're together. Finally, she stops the whole charade of playing hard to get, and and she she lets him into like they there's a connection there, that that potential for love is there now. That that like we're on the same page. This is amazing, and it gets cut short. And it made me. It reminded me of a point in my life which is impossible for me to explain to people because it is that moment. That moment before, like, you're not dating yet. You're not in love yet. You just have that moment where it's nothing but potential. And, 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 it's, and it's like the just before things get started, where it's all taken away. And there was a woman in my mid-20s who we were friends. She was in a relationship. She got out of a relationship. And... There had been the friendship, and then it started to become something more. This was in the MySpace days. And we lived in different... We lived like two, two and a half, three hours away from each other. So it was a lot of our communication was just online. And it was friendly, just friendship at first. So, you know, respectful of her relationship and all that stuff. She was cool, whatever. She, the first person to commission artwork from me, somebody who was... Uh, a, a big part of me uh, putting a lot of my energy into creating art uh, more so than I had ever been in my life and a huge inspiration motivation for me and then she became single and it turned from a friendship into more romantic and there was a time where she was going to come out and visit me she was going to come with her friend to go stay at another friend's house or a sister's house or something like that who lived in the same area as me and while she was out we were going to finally hang out and spend time and date or whatever we're going to see where it goes is this it's like this moment where you know things are finally like she's available i'm available we're both into each other and there's this moment that's going to happen where it's like finally we're going to connect and see what happens and on her drive out she died in a car accident and it messed me up messed me up i mean it changed me to this i'm a different person i the person i was before that happened and the person i i am now two different people it is traumatic and it's not only traumatic it's like impossible to communicate that type those types of feelings those types of emotions when it's like we weren't dating it's not like my girlfriend died it's not like somebody i was in love with died but it was like all of this unknown potential was there that got taken away her life got taken away and whatever could have potentially been could have been nothing maybe we didn't fit together but i mean we had it's not like we had just met like, like this guy, Nani was into her for two years. He had been pining for her, been trying to get her attention. And just, f and finally it got to that point. And with Allison, it was years of like just f friendliness. And then it was all of a sudden the, the, the instant it was about to happen, it was taken away. And it's such a unique moment in time. It's such unique like emotions that i mean emotions never run as high as they do at that moment like right when it's leading up and that day i didn't find out till that evening that she had died the night before she'd driven out the night before and she just never made it out so that whole day i was waiting for her 
to like show up at my work. I was waiting for her to call me so we could, you know, make plans because uh, we were supposed to spend time together after I got off of work. And I got out of the shower and I get a f- call from my friend who lived in the same town she did. And he told me and then I was in denial. And then it just like it, it really changed me. It, it completely changed who I am. I'm still it's still I would have panic att- every once in a while i still have panic attacks when somebody is going somewhere and i don't hear from them it, it still has messed me up and it when i saw that be the turning point at the beginning of this movie like it got me it was like i know exactly what that is like and it's so weird because you can't it's so hard to explain to people so Nani dies, gets killed by Sudeep, and becomes reincarnated into a maggot that's sitting on a leaf that obviously becomes a fly, which this movie is titled Fly, and it's about Nani as a fly seeking revenge against Sudeep, which is amazing. I mean, it starts off, you see how hopeless of being a fly is not only just hopeless you're vulnerable like how dangerous existence is which is very similar to a bug's life where you see just kind of how i think there's even shots that are similar to a bug's life but you just see how vulnerable it is to be a fly how unnoticed you are as a fly but also like you see once he starts understanding what the advantages of being a fly are in how visceral those annoyances are when he starts to do it to Sue deep where like having a fly buzzing in your ear is annoying is like just unmeasurably annoying having a fly like buzzing around your eye your nose hair landing on your face crawling on your face like there's this great scene where he's keeping Sue deep up because he's like Sue deep's trying to move in on on Kala now that that he took him out and trying to as a predator trying to manipulate this woman into liking him even though it's it's only going to be temporary he doesn't it's not like a long-term thing this guy doesn't love her she is just nothing but a conquest he wants to conquer her and then move on but because she is was never into him it's it's even more enticing it's a bigger challenge for him and Nani is there to try and keep that because he still loves Kali. He's loved her for two years. Finally has that moment where it's like that potential of it finally happening and it got taken away. So you get to see that aspect of what it would be like for a fly and how this fly is able to manipulate situations in order which adds comedy it is in so many ways kind of like a kids movie. It has like that that home alone type of vibe of like of like booby traps and setting things up. It's very very smart. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at inspireddisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want 8x10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form you go to inspireddisorder.com you buy original artwork you buy prints you buy shirts you're supporting an artist directly and if you're the type of person that likes to invest in nfts there are also nfts available for select faces go to inspireddisorder.com now and now let's get back to the show and like whether you're trying to go to sleep with fly, like so many 
like just ways in which this fly is messing with this dude is is priceless. I mean, it's like it's the best part of it where he's like trying to fight this dude on his own. And that's like for the next half hour is is this fly Nani as a fly fucking with Sue Deep. And then there's a point where he's able to well, like there's first off before this, there's a car crash that happens. Right. He causes first he causes a traffic jam, which is brilliant how he does it, how the fly does it. And then it causes this traffic, this accident cars ca- causes Sue Deep to, to get in a car accident. And in this accident, like a bus- bunch of dust is everywhere. All the windows of the car are covered in dust and the fly writes in like carves out the, the letters in dust. I will kill you which is badass. It's a badass moment. Like, halfway through this movie, you see, like, oh, this fly means business. And he's going crazy because he hasn't gotten any sleep. He's constantly being bugged by flies, which is, like, would make you crazy. Not only to be constantly bothered by flies, but also not being able to get sleep on top of that. Like, would just add to the, the entire horrible situation. Right. But so he writes this thing. I'm going to kill you. And then he goes to Kala and. You know, kind of I know we're in a ridiculous story where a guy is reincarnated, but still understands everything, remembers his past life, is still in love with Kala, is trying to get revenge for this guy. You know, it's it's a fantasy type of I mean, it's a story this dude is telling to his kid. So it's a it's a made up story, obviously. But. He goes to Kala and pretty effortlessly not only convinces Kala that the fly is him, that, that Nani is now the fly. Like, she pretty, pretty effortlessly believes, oh, this fly is Nani. Holy shit. But not only that, effortlessly convinces her that we need to kill Sudeep. She's like, yes, I am into killing this dude, fly. I am so into it. Let's go kill Sue Deep Fly. I, Nani, you know you're. Guess what, Nani? I'm a, I'm a I'm a uh, micro artist, and uh, you could use uh, some some upgraded armor, huh? And she makes him armor, which is great. Like I really love the imagination of this movie, the the action of this movie, the psychological warfare that this fly is doing to Sue Deep. So she makes them, and then there's this great, like, montage where it's like now they're working together, right? The first first half hour is like this this rom-com, which I didn't really like. And the second half hour is, is like, Nani going after Sue Deep and making him annoying, making him go crazy. And then the, the, the next half hour is him and Kala, like, this montage of them training, of them setting up these booby traps, of doing all of these different things. Meanwhile, like Sudeep is trying to like poison the fly, but then the fly is like working out and is able to like poison him instead. It is funny. It is fun. It has action. It is so much fun. The training montage is a lot of fun. The the mini armor that he gets is a lot of fun. Uh Sudeep ends up g- getting called by like the shaman type of a guy who is offering to do a spell to do this ritual and does this ritual to like possess birds to go after Nani like Sudeep is doing everything to try and keep this fly out of his house like he he locks his house up seals it up does all of these different things unsuccessfully by the way and and like as a last resort tries to get these birds and that's a fun That whole action set piece of the birds trying to hunt down Nani is great. And then the end, where it's like, Nani and Kala think that they were succeeded in killing Sue Deep. And he he didn't. He didn't die. He almost died. He like, he, you know, after the bird thing, he gets stuck in this room with the fire, but they were able to break him out his people were able to break him out and he survived so everything she thinks everything's fine and she ends up 
he, obviously he shows up and she knows, oh shit, he's alive. He brings her to his place. Uh, Nani follows. And there's this, the end battle is pretty crazy, right? You got Sue Deep using bullets to try and shoot a fly out of the air. Right, okay, fine, sure. I mean, I saw a training montage of this fly, so I can go along on the ride to believe that, uh, he, sure, he's, he's got these crazy glasses where he's trying to shoot. I loved it, right? Great action, tons of suspense. The way it ends, the sacrifice that is made at the end of this movie is so great, right? It's so brutal. You're like, you're watching this fly, by the way. I don't, like, I have a newfound respect for flies after having watched this movie. One, because it's like, oh, is that somebody I know? <laughs> like, did somebody get reincarnated into a fly? But also, like, you care for this fly. There is these moments towards the end where it's like, you know, like the end of any action movie where your hero is like just like injured and and like backed into a corner. Seemingly no option for survival. Seemingly complete and utter failure. And he makes this sacrifice. Right? Makes this sacrifice which is like you want to talk about bringing tears to my eyes getting me choked up when this fly sacrifices himself to end to try and save kala and how that all plays out is amazing so top to bottom love this like super super interesting unique one of a kind type of a movie so many different genres put together has that like really a playful kind of like a family comedy but yet action movie all that stuff great mix of everything and then the end credits are kind of weird the end credits are weird because it's almost like a mini sequel where nani ends up getting reincarnated into another fly and is back but at the same time kala is unintentionally kind of with uh a, somebody who's trying to rob her like this this weird one-off part of the story where a guy breaks into her house once and then like they're it's like they're having she's having a conversation with nani but meanwhile the the robber thinks that she's having a conversation with him and she like convinces him to like cha turn his life around or whatever. It's like this weird credit sequence of like a mini sequel of like more of a movie. It's so weird and it just ends. And I don't know. It's probably the YouTube version. Like it ends when she's at a, a vet, a veterinary's office trying to get help for nani her fly because something i forget um but yeah overall i really enjoyed this movie Ega. so much fun so interesting and you know once it gets going that first part kind of kind of rough but once it gets going it's amazing it was such a fun ride i had so much fun watching it you get like the thing with these longer run times of these Indian films is they really get you invested in these characters in a way to where you really care what happens. Even if it's a fly by the end, I'm so invested in this story and so rooting for this fly to be successful for so many reasons. And you see like successes and failure. It's just so good. Uh, but I highly recommend checking it out. Rent it, buy it, check it out. It's so much fun. I highly recommend it. I think there is a sequel. I don't... I have a feeling it's not good. I don't think it's... It's not by the same guy. So uh, the chances of me checking it out are not likely. But I really enjoyed this movie. I would highly recommend checking it out. Ega. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com and follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Oh!
what? Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.